Hey everyone, welcome to another Heavy Metal Diecast video, and today we have one from Forces of Valor. It is in 172nd scale diecast. It is a RAF Chinook HC1. Um, England is one of the biggest operators of this particular helicopter, second only to the United States military, and this particular one is Bravo November, and was one of the original 30 Chinooks ordered by the RAF in 1978. Um, it's been involved in every major operation with the RAF uh, since it ended service until its actual retirement in 2022. It is now preserved at the Royal Air Force Museum in Cosford. And what we'll do is we'll get this slip off and see if we can check out um, the actual helicopter. Um, as you can see it in the box, it's got a little um, little base plate there. It's got some background on it. It is presented nicely in the box, I suppose. Um, but I reckon it's, uh, you know, no good in the box though, is it? We better get this um, out of the box and have a real good look at the helicopter itself. So here it is out of the box. Um, it does come with a uh, set of instructions, I assume, which uh, do look quite comprehensive. Uh, we'll quickly have a quick squeeze at those before we get onto the model itself. So as you can see, these are quite comprehensive, quite large, which is fantastic. Has some, you know, all details about the parts and everything that you do need to uh, put on which is pretty cool, and the actual model itself here. Now this uh, this first saw action, um, this most notable action was at the Falklands War, and uh, which this particular aircraft is depicted right here. And um, it was actually being, um, it was being transported to the Falklands on a container ship called the MV Atlantic Conveyor, along with uh, another three uh, Chinooks, some maintenance equipment and, and other supplies and everything like that, um, as uh, England entered the war, the Falklands War. It was while en route to that was, that was when the Atlantic Conveyor was attacked by two Argentinian superintendards that fired axis of missiles into the ship. Both missiles um, made a direct hit and the Atlantic conveyor would actually be engulfed in flames and eventually sink three days later. But luckily, Bravo uh, November was on an operation at the time and was not on board. But I think the actual helicopter itself does sit here nicely. It's on a little base. It does come with, um, obviously, the uh, stand underneath, and it's got to have some rotor blades somewhere. But what we'll do is we'll get it off this base and get it into our hands and have a real good look at it. So it does come... It's got its rotor blades that you need to um, fit on, and it does come with that little stand. There's a three-piece stand, um, which is obviously clear, that you need to put together. And it does come with a little baggie that has the antennas and everything that you need to affix. Also some plugs, I think, for underneath if you do want to take it off the display base. Speaking of display base, this is how it comes. It comes on this pretty cool display base like that. Um, it is obviously affixed to that with a couple of screws. Um, so once you put this together, you can, you know, if you want to, display it on the actual base itself, if you want to do that. We'll keep it on the base for a moment and use that to actually keep my sausage fingers away from it so you can get a real good look at the details of it. We'll run across the side of the fuselage and have a real good look at it. Ah, that looks magic. It's got some great detail. The finish on it is a nice satin finish. The paint's beautiful. We'll run across the top. And obviously, you got uh, little holes there that where you've got to put some of those um, accessories on. Same with on the front, you've got to put some antennas, accessories on there. I'll have a little look at the front of the helicopter on this side. It does look like there's a couple of pilot figures in there. We'll run to this side and go down and have a little look. Let's see if you can see inside there, maybe. It's a little bit hard, sorry about that. But we'll run down. The details, panel lines, all the little windows and the window nets in there, all, all look really neat. Uh, it was really well done. I think this is pretty pretty well done. It's fantastic. Filters on the engines and everything, even the engine colour, the exhaust and everything like that. I think that's pretty cool. We'll have a little look in back and obviously uh, we'll try and get some focus in there. Um, so you can actually see inside there. That would be really handy if we could. You can see all the way down there. It's it's got some great detail inside there. This this door actually does does close if you want to have it in the closed position. And comes down. I think it's it is quite a nice looking rendition for sure. And that base is just a pretty cool novel little thing. I reckon it comes up all right. And uh, what we'll do is we'll. We'll take it off the base and 
put some rotor blades on it and uh, complete it all out so uh, you can see what it looks like when it's all kitted out. Just to quickly show you these parts as you need to put on just to show you the size of those so th these are going to be really fun. Um, this is an optional part to put on but as you can see mine was actually broken already so I will not be putting it on. It is I think like a winch sort of thing. It Mine was just in pieces. <laughs> it's just uh, well that's my bad luck as per usual and also you've got this little uh, little piece here that uh, you've got to, these two little antennas you've got to put on the front of the uh, helicopter and also the rotor blades themselves they are specific to each rotor so they do have a different end on each each one so you won't get them mixed up they go to their specific sides all right let's get this together just quickly before we take it off the base, I assembled it while it was on the base so it wouldn't move around and stuff like that and make it a bit easier to put those uh, fiddly little bits on. <laughs> those little bits, yay. <laughs> but they did, look, they did slip in the holes as long as you, I needed tweezers and everything like that. So as long as you've got uh, some steady hands and some tweezers, they do slip in those holes that are allocated for them so you didn't have to like make them wider or anything. They, they went straight in. If you So if you can aim good, they will go straight in nicely. The, um... The front aerials were, they for me, they were a little bit of pain because if you tried to put too much pressure on them, you would sort of bend them a little bit. So you, you've got to find that delicate balance of being able to put enough pressure to put them in the holes without actually bending those antennas because they are very delicate. Um, they're only plastic. Um, and, of course, the rotor blades, all they, these went in perfectly. Um, no dramas because they have their allocated holes and they spin freely and everything like that. So I think – and this is how it, it would look if you decided to keep it on the base too, if you wanted to dis display it just like this, which is, you know, pretty cool. But what we'll do is we'll get it off the base so we can actually look underneath the helicopter as well. All right, let's quickly get this off the base. So this is off the first base um, and underneath – it has another base, so you've got another three screws before you can get the model completely off the base, off everything. I thought I'd just quickly show you this bit as well. So this is completely off the base. Once you get it off the base, there is three screws missing because the actual secondary base um, that there is screws into these holes, but you are provided with another three screws that you can uh, screw back into the base of the helicopter. And it also, as you can see there, it does have some uh, plugs for you to plug over every single screw hole if you plan on keeping it off the base and displaying it on the stand instead. So what we'll do is we'll quickly plug those holes and put those extra three screws back in and we'll have a look at this aircraft properly. Okay, finally. <laughs> it, uh, there is a, they do make you work for it. Uh, Forces of Ella do make you work for it if you want to take it off the base. Um, we've already got it upside down, so we'll start from the bottom. And you can see the uh, plugs here. They do still sit out a bit. They don't sit flush, which is a bit, a little bit disappointing. Um, that's where all the screws are. So you've just got to be careful when you put those into around where the antenna is here in that one. So that you don't actually, you know, break an antenna or anything like that. But it has some great detail underneath. Obviously pretty hard because it is a, a black finish underneath here. But I, I think it does, you know, if we try and look in here again and try and uh, get a little bit of light in there and focus it is hard to see in there i'll take some uh detailed photos of that so you can see inside it'll be very similar inside like the uh, american one we did earlier on but to be honest these are these are still well done i think this is quite well done the paint finish is fantastic the uh you know rotor details and everything like that is really nice and as i said each each uh, engine has its own uh, way that the rotors are affixed to the top of the where the blades have to go in. Um, so you will not accidentally put them in the wrong position and they do spin quite freely. Um, there is no dramas in that. It does have all the, uh, I'll move that blade out of the way, it does have all the like, nice details in there of the markings of the aircraft. It's called sign markings and the RAF markings. I think it comes up really nice. And obviously there's the, the antennas are on there, so you've got to be very delicate with that. And I, I think this, this comes up a treat. And we'll, we'll spin it around on the other side delicately. Now we've got to be a little bit careful because of all these little protruding bits and pieces here and there. And we'll have a little look along those. So as I said, these, these do slip in quite nicely. There is no dramas. You've just got to be a little bit careful with them and uh, have a steady hand and some tweezers and not just... Not the shakes, so don't do it after a heavy heavy session on the beers. So, 
But um, I reckon it does come up a treat. It is a worthy effort, and this is quite a, a good rendition. I've had a bit of a hit and miss with the aircraft and stuff like that from Forces of Valor. Some have been really good, some are, but have been, uh, you know, left me a little bit wanting here and there. Um, but this, this is fantastic. I think it comes up a treat, as I've said. I think it comes up fantastic. You will not be disappointed if you do happen to have one, if you're in into your Chinooks or RAF, whatever you're... I'll put it down on the deck here and we'll uh, have a little zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. And uh, I think this is fantastic. I'm very happy with it. I don't have any real dramas with it and uh, everything does, does move nicely on it. I did get this off a seller on eBay for $88, so it wasn't overly expensive and I think it's not too bad. All right, guys, you know the deal. I'll take some happy snaps of this, and so you don't have to hear me waffle on anymore. I'll wind this video up. Um, if you did enjoy it, throw us a bit of a like. That would be awesome. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. That would be fantastic as well. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. Once again, I appreciate it, as always. You have a fantastic rest of your day. Cheers, guys.